Hey guys, welcome to the channel, Adventure Travel and Scuba. Today, another tire change video. I will be changing my front tire. If you follow me on my channel and my, on my adventures, I've been using Moto Z GPS tractionators. I find those are great tires. They last a long time and uh, I'm overall very happy with them. They do well in uh, most of the conditions. Because I made a tire change video in the past, uh, what I will be doing different, I will be using Baja No Pinch Tool. That's the tool that helps you to install tires. It doesn't help you to remove the tires, but it helps you with the installation. It's, uh, it makes the life so much more simpler. Of course, I don't, usually I don't carry that on my uh, rides because uh, that's uh, so much extra weight uh, to go with. And I caught a flyer, flat tire only once uh, when I was riding and that was in the rear. And I managed to change it with no, uh, without any issues with just the tire spoons. So today I will be taking it off as usual. I, I will balance it, uh, but I don't think I will be filming that because if you roll back to my previous videos, there is a video how to balance it. I just basically want to show you how to change that with the Bahano pinch and also how to break the bead because that's uh, where everybody's struggling with. So basically we take off the wheel, put in a new tire and uh, we'll take it from there. It's really appreciated if you hit the like button, comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet. That helped me a lot uh, as a small YouTube creator. I hope you enjoy the content that I put up on my channel and follow my adventures. Let's not waste any more time and jump straight into this video. So first what you want to do, you want to loosen up your pinch bolts and there is two on each side. Okay, I got all the pinch bolts loose. So now I will jack up my bike a little bit to take the wheel off the ground. But before I do that, actually, I wanna loosen up also the axle bolt. So the pinch bolts are 12 millimeter socket and the axle bolt is 22 millimeter socket. So I want to loosen up while it's on the ground, it's much easier. Just make everything loose. And at this point I will lift up the bike and I'll take the wheel out of the bike. I use a piece of wood, this way I don't, don't have a direct contact with the metal of the jack stand to put all that weight. And you don't need to lift it a lot, just a little bit, just to take that wheel off the ground. And that's pretty much it. So once you have it off the ground, undo the bolt and I use a rubber mallet to take the axle out of here. Just be careful because there's two spaces on both sides. They usually like to fall out and they didn't this time. So I like to take those spaces out as soon as I have room to do so. There's one from the other side and then there is the other one. So the spaces are out and the axle. It's a good idea to loosen up one of the brake calipers. Technically you can bend the forks a little bit out to separate it, but I don't like to put any pressure on the, on the on the forks, uh, I forgot to take that off before. So let's do that. It's only two bolts, not a big job. I did make a video how to put them back on and how to change them a couple of weeks ago. So if you are interested, you can have a look because they just has been replaced like two weeks ago. Now I'm working on the back 
once they're loose it's a good idea to get one of those bungee cords or something and hang them on there this way you're not putting much pressure on the caliper itself so now you don't have much pressure on your hose and the wheel should come out now we should be able to slide the wheel no problem so what I like to do I like to use the old tire to rest the wheel on this way I don't damage my disc brakes and first thing of course to remove the valve cap and then remove the valve core inside drain the air out of the tire put everything in a safe place I like to put a small amount of dish soap all around not too much and to see how tight is the bead because usually the front wheel the bead is much easier to loosen up than a rear tire flip it over and the same idea on this side the bead does not loose yet it's uh, I thought it's gonna be much easier usually it breaks much easier I must have jinxed it, unless because it's a little bit cooler. Okay, let's try the beat breakers. I have a Motion Pro beat breakers. Now we have to break the bead on the other side as well. Okay, now the bead is loose. At this point I will use the rim protectors, not to damage, not to create too much damage. So just be careful not to pinch the tube when you're grabbing the, especially the first bites. It's a good idea to start on from the opposite side, where the valve stem is. And I like to lock it under the brake disc. One more tire spoon. So take a small bite, don't rush it, because big bites are not going to take you far. And keep on pressing with your knees. So once uh, you have this a little bit out, the rest goes much easier. So technically you don't even need the rim protectors because you're not causing much of a damage if you're gentle enough. So now we have one side out. Take the rim protectors out. Ah, 
at this point we want to remove the tube and that's a 12 millimeter nut that's holding the tube valve I have a heavy duty tubes those are a little bit harder to work with just to let you know all right the tube is out and now we have to remove the rest the other side of the tire There you go, just needs a little bit. And the old tire is out. So now as always, I wanna make sure and clean all the stuff here in the rim. I'm just using a brake cleaner. It's uh, good stuff for everything and it ev evaporates so it doesn't leave much of a residue. But uh, if you are sensitive, uh, make sure to wear a respirator. Uh, you don't want to inhale that too much. They do get starting to get a little bit of corrosion. As you see, that's a little bit of corrosion. I'm not sure even how. So it looks like the most of the corrosion is here by the valve hole. Uh, so the water must be getting there somehow. Check your spokes at this time, make sure they're all nice and tight. I do check it quite regularly anyways, but anyway, so this is time to take the advantage of it. And now that wheel is ready for a new tire. So we, we will unpack the new tire. my next step I like to use a little bit of uh, baby powder inside the uh, this way the uh, tube doesn't stick don't put too much just a little bit so that's the amount I'm putting in if you can see it hopefully and then just make sure it goes around all around make the tire smell nicer Smells like a baby's ass. <laughs> so I will take the tire out, outdoors so to shake it out extra stuff. So at this point, you want to match the rotation of the tire as well. Uh, there is no indication on the front tire which way is the rotation. On the rear one, there is an arrow, but on the front, uh, if you look on your disc brake, this is the uh, direction of your rotation. So that's how you match the mark on your tire and the mark on your tire indicator is right there. The rear GPS tractionator also can be installed uh, in two different ways. Uh, you can uh, have that uh, 20, sorry, 37 e I believe it is, or 5050. Uh, that's, uh, if I remember correctly, that's what the installation was. So now you want to make sure that those arrows are sort of matching. Uh, another thing on the GPS tractionators, uh, they don't have, uh, that little dot that uh, most of the tire finds, uh, you can find uh, where is your uh, heavy spot of the tire. Um, I looked on it and I tried to see on the website, I couldn't see nothing. So I have to live the way it is. So now what we do, again, a little bit of dishwasher det detergent. That helps a lot. Uh, when you're sliding on the bead. Some people use it with a mix with water. I don't mix it, I just 
and make sure you do it on the inside as well. Okay, now that should be pretty simple. Just make double check the rotation. It is this way. So you want to start on the bottom here and press it with your knees and the top goes in. So this is as simple as that to install that side. Uh, now we want to put the tube in. That's the next step. But what I will do, of course, I'm going to have to clean it. I don't want to have the tube dirty like this. Especially that I'm reusing the tube, so it was laying on the floor, so there might be some debris from the uh, sand here that's all over the garage. A little bit of this soap will should take care of this stuff. Especially here by the valve, because that's where I had the most of the corrosion showing up. At this point everything is clean and we are ready to install the tube in, on the tire. Uh, it, th that's a little bit tricky because it's a um, really thin wheel. I find it's much easier to put the tire on the rear wheel, but let's go for it. Then you want to start where the valve goes. That's number one. So just first put it loosely all around. Just try to keep it as straight as possible to where that valve goes. Just make sure it's not bending anywhere. Okay, so she's in. Now we're ready to push that in inside the, where the valve hole is. That's the most challenging part for me. Almost there. I got him. All right. I'm ready to just thread it a little bit, the nut that's securing the valve stem. Don't tie it all the way, because no point yet. And same idea, I want to loop the top part with the, this soap. Inside and outside, if you have too much, no problem, because we just want to make sure that it's slippery, not flowing all over like I did. There we go, much better now. So this is where the Baja no pinch tool comes in really handy and I bought the deluxe kit and it comes with the shafts for different type of axle uh, for the front we're using this one here so I want to start here on, on the opposite side from the valve stem it's a good idea to have a big bead body as well but uh, I, I usually get away without it so the nice part about this tool, you're not going to pinch the, uh, the tube with this because it's, it's really gentle the way it's working it in. So you always want to keep the pressure with your knees. Doesn't matter if you're using the spoons or whatever. So you want to get on the opposite side from where you're working and putting more pressure with your knees. We're almost done and this is it. So she's in. As you see the Baja no pinch makes it so much easier to install everything. Just clean the excess soap. That little tool is a lifesaver, I tell you guys. It takes so much hard work out of the equation and not scratching the rims. So now we want to reinstall the valve core. This is still not tightened until I have, the, I have it inflated. Now it's ready to get a little bit of air in there. 
not too much at first. Just make sure you got nothing sticking out anywhere. I think we're looking good. Now add more pressure to set the bead. And what I like to do Alright guys, I have the new tire replaced, it's all balanced, uh, I will link the video if you want to see the balancing process, I didn't film it this time because I'm running low on memory card. Uh, and now the installation process is uh, in the reverse, so basically we just have to put the spacers and all the stuff together and I like to grease uh, all the stuff here, so grease the shaft, uh, the axle shaft. Make sure you have a nice coat of uh, new fresh grease after I cleaned it all first. Don't put too much, you just need a little bit there. Then same idea goes with the spacers. You wanna put a little bit of grease on both sides where the spacers are going in. Uh, make sure you grease up inside here uh, where the axle is and uh, spacers. Uh, put the spacers back in on both sides. You want to make sure that the brake calipers are separated because you're gonna have a hard time uh, putting the disc back in place. We'll be using the stir stick, just gonna put it in between here, pry the cylinders or the pistons of the brakes on both ways to create more space. One thing to remember, anytime you're doing that, before you start driving, pump your front brake or rear brake, whatever you're working, uh, because you don't want to go on the road and uh, end up with no brakes. Uh, that's a very important step. Uh, I'll do the same thing to this side here. And don't use metal parts. As I mentioned earlier, use the piece of wood. Uh, Paint stir sticks work really well. If you need to thinner it, you can shave it a little bit and that will do the trick for you. Yeah, and pry it both ways because uh, you got four pistons on the four front brakes. Just make sure you have enough space in there later to work with. All right, so now we are ready for reinstallation of that wheel. Just make sure you clear the brake and make sure you have the uh, ABS uh, on, the right, on the correct side because the sensor is right there on, that, on the left side of your motorcycle. Okay, now you want to get the axle and lift the wheel a little bit. Make sure that spacer stays in place and push the axle inside. Using mallet, if you have to, gently tap it in there so it goes all the way in. And now the axle nut, it goes to 44 foot-pounds of torque. So you have to torque this to the correct specification. I hope it's not spinning on the other side. Good idea to check, because sometimes it spins. Oh, we got 44 foot-pounds of torque. I like to do a second time, just to make sure. Okay, so that part is done, and the pinch bolts are going to 16 foot-pounds of torque. My torque rate starts at 20, but I can always back it up. So, four back. And that's a 12 millimeters.
Okay, that's all torqued to proper specifications now. So now I just have to install the right side brake caliper on, but that's simple process. Uh, the video was made a couple videos back. Um, I can link it down in the description if you're interested, uh, the Torx on that. Uh, but I'm not gonna film it any further because no point to repeat something that I already uh, did in the past. We have a brand new wheel. Make sure it is installed in a proper uh, rotation uh, where the arrow shows uh, the, the way it rotates, right there. So it's the wheel is turning this way. You wanna make sure it's installed properly. Quick job, uh, most of the people can handle it. Uh, the changing the tire is a little bit tricky, uh, especially when you're doing with the sp tire spoons. I'd made a video in the past as well. If you want to browse through the channel, if you don't have the Baja tools, not everybody's gonna spend that money to buy the Baja no pinch tool, but it is doable with the spoons and it doesn't take the really that much longer. Uh, you just have to be more careful when you're taking the um, the tire off not to pinch the tube and not to damage the rims as much. Uh, if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button, uh, put a comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel that means uh, a lot to me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers!